started bitching. She started moaning. She started saying like, oh my God, you look so stupid. And it was a barrage of insults. But I was like, stiff wear. Stiff wear. Okay, this is my hair. Stiff wear. That bang was... That, you could smoke that bang because it was so blunt. You're a boy. You want to grow your hair out long. But your parents won't let you. Your mom won't let you. Your dad won't let you. And honestly, it was the same for me. So if you guys are interested in this type of video, I wanted to give you guys like my experience with growing my hair out, the reason why I grew my hair out and why I cut it. So it's gonna be a little bit of a long video. Get comfortable, go get you a little drink. This is a Thai tea. And let's get into the video. If you guys haven't met me yet, my name is Dawson Lambert. On this channel, I'll talk about my life, living in Kansas City, fashion, makeup, all the things. So hit the subscribe if you're interested in these types of videos. Let's get into it. Far as I could remember, back when I was a wee little lad, not even, you know, I wasn't even Dawson Lambert yet. I was still uncomfortable with my skin. I didn't know my groove. I didn't have a pattern or anything like that. I knew that I wanted long hair. It was an innate feeling that I had. I just knew that I wanted long hair since the womb. I honestly thought that I was gonna become a hairdresser just because I loved hair so much. As far back as I could recall, my mom always made me get my hair cut. Every three weeks, every four weeks when my hair got a little bit long past my eyebrows, it was always call up the hairdresser, hey, can I come over? I need to get my son's hair cut. And mind you, I, it was a very traumatic experience for me, okay? One, because I did not want to cut my hair. Two, it was with the hairdresser that I did not like going to. It was not a pleasant experience. And then three, it was always like, I had to get my hair cut a certain way. I had to look a certain way. I had to present myself a certain way. It was very traumatic for me because sh my mother, it wasn't just like a hair kind of thing. It was, I had to cut my hair a certain way. I had to style it a certain way. I had to use certain products. I had to dress a certain way to present myself as a businessman. That's what my mom said. She says, boys have to look like boys. Boys need short hair and you need to look like the businessman professional. Like no businessman in the workplace has long hair. And that, that was that on that. There was no room for argument. There was no room for negotiation. And I hated it. It was dread. Every single time my mom called up this hairdresser, it was honestly, I felt dread. And it was traumatizing. And it was all the way up until I would say eighth grade was when I finally got to choose what kind of hairstyle I wanted. The hairdresser my cousin went to her name is megan my cousin put my sister on megan and then my sister put me onto megan because i would go with my sister to the hair appointments and i would talk to megan and she was a super chill lady you know does hair she does amazing work she's in garden city so if you guys are in garden city like hit up megan at illusion hair salon so up until the eighth grade with much adversity I finally convinced my mom to let me go get my hair cut with megan that's who i wanted to do my hair and so, you know, I go to the salon and the haircut that I wanted wasn't what my mom wanted, okay? It wasn't the businessman seven thirds part haircut. It was literally those Korean, early 2010s Korean undercut, longer on top, fringy bang type of thing. You know, shiny had it. That's what I wanted, okay? So I went to the hairdresser, got my haircut, and I fell in love. I honestly fell in love with the way that my hair looked. I... I was the flyest bitch in the building. Like, you couldn't tell me anything. Like, you gotta stay outside because this is my building, okay? I felt so good with the way I looked. And my sister was like, well, new you, new era. We need to get you a new wardrobe. So we went to Buckle and I got a blue Hurley t-shirt. It was like one of those dry fit t-shirts. Um, and then we went over to Rue 21 and I got my first pair of white skinny jeans. And I wore the hell. I wore the hell out of this outfit. It was my uniform for the eighth grade. I felt like I was a K-pop star, okay? I was the flyest bitch in the building. You couldn't tell me nothing. This was my first experiencing dictating the way that I looked and I felt good about it. That was the eighth grade. And end of eighth grade was when I moved from Garden City to Wichita. So when I moved to Wichita, I told my mom, I don't want no one to cut my hair. I don't know one, anyone in Wichita who can do hair as good as Megan. So I'm going to wait until we can get back to Garden City so I can cut my hair with Megan. And my mom was like, okay, okay, like we can wait. 
you know how like when your hair is cut short and then you just kind of let it grow out and you look like Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber circa like 2012. Like you know how I had that long like weird flip haircut. That's what my hair looked like and that was the longest my hair has ever been. And my mom was like, okay, it's Christmas. We're gonna go home. You're gonna go get your haircut. Like you better call up Megan because you don't wanna go to the other lady that I wanna go to. We call up Megan. We made appointments for all of my siblings. I made the executive decision. I was like, this is my hair. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. Like no one's gonna tell me what I'm gonna do. So I went to Megan. Mind you, my hair was like the Justin Bieber haircut. It was like short, but then it's like overgrown, but it wasn't styled correctly. So it just looked weird. I went to Megan and I told her, I want blunt bangs. I don't want no wispy bang. I don't know. I don't want no side bangs. I want a <laughs> Lady Gaga poker face. Ma, 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 ma. I want to hold them like they do in Texas place. I wanted a Lady Gaga poker face <laughs> blunt bang across the forehead. Okay. Like I was the originator, the originator of the, of the, of the mini bang, of the, of the horse bang, the, the Lisa stiff bang. I was the originator, okay? I told Megan, give me a bang cut and that's all I want because I'm growing my hair out and I wanted bangs. I looked like Willy Wonka, okay? My hair was to here and I had blunt bang, okay? And even Megan was like, are you sure you wanna walk out this facility looking like that? I looked a mess. I looked, <laughs> I looked stupid, okay? But in that moment, I was like, this is my hair and I'm gonna get a blunt bang if I want to. So my sister drove us home from Wichita. My mom was still in Wichita and she was gonna join us a few days later for like Christmas. So I got my hair cut that day and my mom calls us up. She's like, did you get your hair cut? Um, you know, how does it look? Like, I wanna see. So my sister took a picture of my <laughs> blunt bang and gave it uh, and sent it to my mom and she called up and she started bitching. She started moaning. She started saying like, oh my God, you look so stupid. And it was a barrage of insults. But I was like, stiff wear, stiff wear. Okay, this is my hair. Stiff wear. That bang was, that, you could smoke that bang because it was so blunt. It, it looked stupid. So the next day, my mom drove home from Wichita and she was, like, she came to my grandparents' house. My grandparents' house is still in Garden City, so that's why we were there. She got to the front door. She opened up that front door and even before I could say hi, even more, before we could say Merry Christmas, any of the festivities, she started yelling my ears off. She started cussing me out. She started like saying like so many like insults and just like things that aren't nice. When I was growing up, my mom would call me what I thought was the word for gay. I thought it was the Vietnamese word for homosexual. And I did research into it it's actually the the slur for homosexual. It's the F slur. And she would call me that when I was growing up. Like ever since I was growing up, she was like, oh, are you big day? Are you, you know, like you want to be a girl? You're a big day? Like constantly when I was like from as little as I could remember up until around like high school, she would call me big day. She would call me like, you know, there was this figure in our community. And mind you, it's a very small city. So if... People know you, people know your business, okay? Anyone who knows anyone knows you. There was this figure in our community who is woman presenting, female presenting. I'm assuming she's transgender, but my mom, anytime I brought up the fact that I was gonna cut my hair, she would be like, oh, so you wanna be like that T word slur and the person's dead name. I don't know what her real name is because I don't, because I was like very young, I never, I didn't know. I didn't even know what transgenderism was at the time. So she would say that slur, you wanna be like that T word, dead name. And I was like, no, I don't wanna, I'm not trans, I'm not a trans woman. I'm a boy and I want long hair. Like I knew, there was a lot of things I didn't know when I was little, but I knew for a fact that I was a boy and I knew that I wanted long hair. And that was that on that. There was nothing more than that. There was no sexual implications behind it, but it was just constant barrage of slurs and bullying from my mother because I wanted long hair. When I got my bang cut and my mom came that my mom came to the the house, she was like, "I'm gonna call up, I'm gonna call up my hairdresser, and you're gonna go get your hair cut. Like no ifs, ands, or buts." And I told her, "I'm not gonna get my hair cut. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not gonna get my hair cut because it grew out of my head, and it's not yours. If you wanna get your hair cut, you can go get your hair cut." We got into like a fat argument. She goes. Well, if you don't want to cut your hair, if you don't want to look like a boy, then you can't be my son. We were screaming the house, whole family was gathered there, and that's when my grandparents stepped in, and they were like, whoa, like, you know, slow your roll, lady. You can't say, you can't say things like that. And for me personally, I feel like you can't 
joke about certain things without it affecting people long term, okay? So like, if you're in a relationship, if you're in a marriage, you can't joke about the D word. You can't joke around about the B word because once you step past that line, it's something you can't go back, okay? It puts a sense of fear. It puts a sense of distrust in with your partner because it's not a joke. It's not something you joke about. So when a mother tells her child she wants to disown him, from that point on, it completely changed my relationship dynamic with my mom. And I think from that point was when I stopped seeing my mom as my mother. Hi, so this is me from the future. I want to give you guys a content warning for this part of the video because I do mention the S word as well as the K word. So if you guys are sensitive to that topic, I'm going to leave a timestamp right here for you guys to skip to. Like I mentioned, if you don't want to watch this part, it's like very heavy. So skip to right here. We went to cut my hair with the hairdresser that I didn't like. And that was when I went into my depressive spiral. I was like, if I can't have control over my life, I don't want to live anymore. And that was, I was what, 13 at the time? That's sad. What child should think about not wanting to live? What child wants to leave this earth? at that age. So from that point on, I stopped talking. I went completely mute. I didn't talk to anyone. I didn't talk to my family. I did not talk to my parents. I did not talk to my siblings, not my grandparents. The only people that I talked to was my cousin. Her hair was down to her thighs, okay? And she had that Chinese genetics, that black silky hair down to her thighs. It wasn't even butt crack length. It was to her thighs. And I honestly thought she was my life goals. I wanted to be the embodiment of my cousin. The other people I would talk to were like people online because I used to play this video game on my computer and I would just talk to people online and that was it. For anybody else, I did not talk to my friends. I did not talk to my parents. I did not talk to my siblings. I did not talk to anyone in real life for a whole year. In that time, my siblings called it my phase and they still talk about it. They're like, do you remember when you went through your bitch phase and you didn't talk to us? Yeah, I remember my bitch phase when I wanted to myself and they, they're here making fun of me for it. So I'm just like, okay, you know, whatever. I'm just not gonna like deal with that. And I'm sorry, this is like taking a, a deep turn. Um, that was just the fact of the matter. And you know that Beyonce verse and I'm not sorry when she was like, I, I did not speak another word. For 60 days, I grew my hair past my ankles, slept on a mat on the floor, I swallowed a sword, I levitated. And that was my philosophy, okay? I stopped talking and I that's when I started growing my hair out and I started looking at, you know, Natural 85. I started looking at different hair YouTubers and I started, you know, listening to that song by India Ari, I'm not, I'm not my hair, I'm not my hair. Um, and I would listen to that song on repeat because I'm not an F slur because I like having long hair. Like, that's just not right. And mind you, it wasn't just my mom who would call me the F slur. It would be other family members of mine as well, just because I would, like, br brush my hair with what little hair I had on my head. It was short hair, but I would brush my hair, and I would get stares from family members, and they would call me the F slur behind my back. And I'm just like, you're a grown-ass adult, okay? You're 35, pushing 40? And I'm 14, like, that's not a little bit weird to you. Like, that ain't, that's not weird at all. Like, what's your thought process? Okay. That was the start of my hair journey. I started growing my hair out, and the only person that I trusted to touch my hair was Megan. So I would go back home to Garden City about once, once a year to get my hair trimmed, to get my hair cut by Megan. My hair started growing. My hair was a product of trauma. When I went through high school, I was very depressed and there was a lot going on and my hair just kept growing and growing. It was the one thing that I had control of when everything else was incontrollable. My hair just kept growing and growing. And then once college started, and you guys know how college was for me. If you don't know, I'm gonna link my stuff up above. College was like not a fun time for me and my hair kept growing and growing and growing. The longest my hair has ever been was the end of college. It was down to my hip. When I dropped out of college, I felt like it was a new chapter. I'm just gonna do something different with my life. And I cut it. That's when I took the plunge to cut it. I cut it up to my collarbones. And I got a lot of hate comments. Um, 
not from you guys, but I guess from people just passing by. I got a lot of hate comments saying I killed my channel. You know, any aspirations I had with growing my channel, it just went down the drain because I shouldn't have cut my hair. You know, I look better with my haircut, yada, yada, yada. And most of them came from women. Most of, the, most of these hate comments came from women, which I thought was weird because, you know, women in society are predominantly told what to wear, how to dress. And now I'm online being told by women that I should have kept my hair long. That's a little, you know, it's a little hypocritical, right? I wanted to make this video because I'm in this, I was in the same position with a lot of you guys. And now that I'm living on my own and my mom isn't here to like beat my ass, that's why I made this video. And it's honestly, it's a very raw topic for me because it was traumatic. It was a huge part of my childhood growing up being yelled at by my parents to get my hair cut. And if I didn't get my hair cut, I would get my ass whooped. I was very protective with my hair. I did not put any heat. I did not put any chemicals. I did nothing to my hair. Like my hair is completely virgin. When it was down to my hips, it was completely virgin. And I didn't use heat on it. I took, I babied my hair like it was a child. To anyone who's watching this video and you're in the same boat where you're like, you want to grow your hair out, your parents don't let you. My parents had this reasoning. Boys with long hair are stupid. I was a 4.0 student in high school and I was an honor student studying biochemistry in college. I was on full ride scholarships and I went to international studies on scholarship. Boys with long hair are not stupid. Boys with long hair want to be girls. Girls with short hair don't want to be boys and there are boys with long hair who don't want to be girls. Boys with long hair are dirty. I spend so much money on hair products and I'm one of the most high maintenance people you've like you could ever meet. One of the biggest arguments that I have against parents who don't let their children have long hairs because boys should have short hair. Jesus had long hair. Jesus had long hair, okay? If God made Jesus in his image and God made us in his image, are you going against the word of God and saying that I can't have long hair? Are you, what are you implying about Jesus for having long hair? Like you are sinful. You are going to hell. You are going where little Nas is. You are not seeing the pearly gates. My word of advice with anyone who's wanting to grow their hair out, I would say just do it. Obviously be safe about it. You know, if you're in the same position where your parents are threatening to get you kicked out, wait. I would say wait until you are financially stable. Wait until you can live on your own and then do it. Because I don't, I'm not the one to advise anyone to make any rash decisions that could affect your safety. But at the same time, I'm so big on body autonomy. Like, it's not a joke, you know? So, I just wanted to share my experience with growing my hair out. And the reason why I cut it was because it was just too much trauma. My hair grew out of trauma and I just wanted a fresh start. My belief with hair, hair holds energy. That's why witches have really long hair and people have that witchy look and people call them witches. It's because hair holds energy. When I had really long hair and I wore my hair down, I was overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed with like other people's energy and I had to like either put it up or I had to wrap my hair with a scarf. I honestly believe hair holds energy. That's why when I buy hair online, I always sage, I not sage, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I do not sage. I um, cleanse it with smoke. I pray over it. I don't let people touch my hair because that's like how energy transfer and that's why I didn't trust anyone to do my hair. Hair is so big to people's self esteems not even with boys, but girls too. I know a lot of girls who have hair down to their ass cracks and their parents like, you can't cut it, yada, yada, yada. And then they just go and cut it anyways. And they have huge issues with their families because they cut their hair and their families tell them, oh, you're a girl, you need to have long hair. It's protein, it's dead protein. It's not that deep. In this current moment, you can't grow your hair out when you really want to. Wait, wait until you're financially stable. Wait until you're able to move out on your own and then start growing your hair out because hair, Hair does grow back and hair, it's just a, a statement. It's a, a self-expression statement, you know, for anyone who thinks only gay people have long hair, only gay guys have long hair. I know a lot of gay guys with short hair and I know a lot of straight guys with long hair. That logic doesn't mesh, you know, it just doesn't work out like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm rambling at this point, but if you guys did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. 
if you're if you stay to this part of the story literally leave a haircut emoji like the girl with the blonde hair and like the scissors leave it down below and tell me your experience with your parents letting you or not letting you like have creative self-expression over your own body because i really want to chat with you guys i want to be your stepmother okay my friends call me the stepmother of the group they call me the megaya and it's because it's true i'm like i'm the stepmother I say the truth as it is, and you hate me for that. Ugh. I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Bye. I love you guys.